we're here at Cadwell Park where our competitors are looking forward to tackling the infamous mountain. You're joining us for round four of the Thundersport GB Championship 2016. Yeah, welcome to Cadwall Park then for round four of the championships in 2016. We have the a pretty a challenge coming up for you later. You can see these guys going out ready for their warm up. Cadwell Park, the Aprilia RRB 450s are down on the grid. The umbrellas are up. We had a bit of rain earlier on. There's uh, dry tyres on most of the bikes, but a bit greasy out there. Zach Corduroy, who was in great form last time out at Seneta Cinema, but of course has missed quite a few rounds and races because of injury. Speaking of injury, we send our best wishes to the rider that entered Cadwell Park as the championship leader in the 450s, Will Keynes, who's uh, in hospital, so we send him all the best. Get well soon, Will. What that means is that Sam Cox effectively inherited the championship lead yesterday, number 54, and he will have the usual company around him. On the right there, 196 is Jack Tynan with a brilliant start. 14 is Will Hodgson, and we're on board with him now. But up ahead, the whole shot goes to Keelan Irwin, number 69. Around Charlie's we go, uphill and then downhill around here. Will try and now get into optimum position to try and get the slipstream, but there'll be two or three riders doing the very same thing behind him, who will then get double slipstream. Will Hodgson pulls over to the inside line, getting close to the grass. He tries to pull out a move and does. Will Hodgson will take the lead into turn at Park there. Zach Corduroy was going really quickly, and there is Zach Corduroy. Keelan Irwin now on board with, who was leading and has dropped back to third place. Zach Corduroy there just in front of the yellow leathers almost ran into Will Hodgson just dead. Around into the gooseneck, downhill in fourth place there. I think that's Jack Tyner, but we'll get confirmation of there's so many riders in this equation. Casey Wyatt, that is number six, just up ahead of number 96, Connor Wheeler. A lot of improvements through this field. It is uh, Jack Tynan in fourth place, and now we're on board with Jack Tynan, who's just in fourth there, and that is Keelan Irwin up ahead of him. He thought about a move up the inside, didn't he? Getting a bit loose over the top of the mountain, and now through into the Hall Benz. Brilliant racing the 450s have provided us with since they were introduced into the Thundersport GB roster. And just further back there is Matt Rangeley, number 93, and Tristan Finocchiaro. Tristan Finocchiaro, one of the biggest improvers in this class, it has to be said, since the start of 2016. He has taken that next step and gets ever closer to the podium. There's a great move for the lead. Zach Corduroy is now up ahead of this man, Will Hodgson, who's just going to have to try and follow now Corduroy. Before the start of this season, Corduroy would have been fancy one of the big championship contenders but he's got a lot of work to do if he wants to win it considering he's missed so many races sam cox sam cox is struggling a bit further back but we see a change there brilliant stuff from will hodgson around the outside uh, sam cox who i mentioned that will have inherited that championship lead is just struggling a bit at the moment not a part of this race oh my word what an enormous moment that was for keelan Irwin. How on earth has he stayed on board his motorcycle? There's a big gap now back into third place as Zach Corduroy has a look up the inside into Mansfield. And Will Hodgson says, no, you don't. There's all sorts going off here in this 450 race. Keelan Irwin, certainly the luckiest man on circuit at the moment, although he wasn't actually on the circuit a moment ago. Will Hodgson still leads from Zach Corduroy. Then it's a gap back to Jack Tynan around the outside there from Zach Corduroy. What a move from Corduroy to get himself out into the lead. Will Hodgson will be seething with that one. That is not a place you want to get overtaken. Tynan up to third. Rangely then inherits fourth place and could get himself, the KJD racing rider, a podium if he can get past him. Brilliant stuff at the front of this one then. Zach Corduroy, what a move that was. I've not seen that 
for some time down at the bottom of the mountain. Corduroy leads from Will Hodgson. Lap times wise, they're in the low 138. That's nowhere near lap record pace, but then they are taking lumps out of each other and it's still a bit greasy. So we'll see how they get on later on. We're on board now with Jack Tynan. He's in a bit of a lonely third at the moment as he heads around Charlie's and onto the back straight. Can he close that gap down to the leading duo up ahead? Will Hodgson, that is, directly ahead of him. And then Corduroy, the race leader, breaking now for Park. You saw there just after the, the number two board. And well, he's not having a lonely third place race at all. He's got plenty of company there as uh, Jack Tynan. Matt Rangely picks him off. And so Rangely now does go into a podium position. There you see confirmation number 93 is through on 196. Matt Rangely was one of last year's biggest improvers. And now we're back with Jack Tynan, of course, was in the Thundersport 500 class in 2015. So it's fair to say that Jack has had his fair share of moments. And he's had another one there on the exit of the chicane. In the background there is uh, Tristan Pinocchiaro, number 58. But Jack Tynan, heart in mouth moment there for him. And he's got a bit of work to do if he wants to try and get back on the podium. It is Corduroy that leads from Hodgson, Rangely and Tynan. Corduroy, since getting out front, is just starting to stretch away now. He's lapping a good three, four tenths quicker than anyone else. Further back there, we saw them earlier on. Number nine, Alex Taylor. 96, Connor Wheeler. And number six, Casey Wyatt. Those guys are in sixth, seventh and eighth respectively. Across the line then, Corduroy leads. Hodgson, second. Will Hodgson is set to gain big time in the points here in this race with Sam Cox at the moment uh, down in 10th place. Here's Keelan Irwin, we're aboard of him now, so close through. Charlie's in and Charlie's out. Keelan Irwin has already been on the grass, needs to be very, very careful here. And here he is going straight past 58 Tristan Finocchiaro on the back straight. So, bringing stuff from Keelan and he's made up a place after going grass tracking earlier on in the proceedings. Well, if one or two of these riders hadn't had major moments, then we could have had a three or four way battle for the lead, although they'd have all done well to catch Corduroy. There is Hodgson then in second. Zach Corduroy coming into this round was 97 points off championship leader Will Haynes. He's set to make up quite a bit here with a 25 points looking to go his way. Hodgson could end the championship uh, end this weekend as the championship leader as it stands. As you see there, Tristan Finocchiaro, we mentioned him earlier on, improving all the time. The Transvet group, a prettier rider from Redditch. Of course, you'll probably understand that with a name like Tristan Finocchiaro, uh, his entire family doesn't hail from Redditch, of course. Uh, it's his uh, half English, half Italian uh, scenario with the Finocchiaros. And of course, Tristan's uh, hero was the late great Marco Simoncelli, hence why he runs the very same number. Cross the line, number 22, Zach Corduroy. Brilliant stuff. When Zach Corduroy is on form, there's no stopping him. He showed that all those years ago in the super teams when he won the championship. Here comes Keelan Irwin again, and he's up the inside into Copper. It's nicely done here from the Irishman. And around Charlie, he's just on that wide line now. There's a bit of traffic coming up as well. Charlie's exit, flat out. Goes past one of the super teen riders. We'll have the super teen race coming up for you after the break. But it is Corduroy that is still well in charge. It's a good three second lead for him. We're on board here with the Scott Racing motorcycle rider, Keelan Irwin. Going through the gooseneck and he's making up quite a bit of time there. Catching Matt Rangely by the looks of things. Keelan Irwin, maybe fancies this podium after all. Having been on the grass, he's taking lumps out of the time with Matt Rangely up ahead. We exit the new chicane and now come into the bottom of the mountain. There's Matt Rangely up ahead of him. Left, flick right, then on the gas early, over the top, and he's closing and closing all the while. Brilliant onboard shots there. Still corduroy leads overall. Ryder then picked up two race wins yesterday. So having missed an entire round due to injury, he is on at the moment for a possible 100 out of 100. For now, he's got to get this one done. He'll start the final lap here, and this will be for 75 out of 75 points. 
the perfect way to try and throw yourself back into the championship challenge. Now then, this is the battle for third. Up ahead there is Matt Rangerly, and this is Keelan Irwin in fourth, who has been catching and is so quick here around Charlie's. And now he closes in on Charlie's exit downhill. Right on the power, and here's the opportunity. He'll get into the slipstream, he'll pull out of the slipstream. He's got the inside line on the KJD Racing rider, and Keelan Irwin moves up into third place as they head into Park Corner. There's no stopping Corduroy out front. He's got half a lap left to take another race win. Will Hodgson in second, 20 points. Nice and consistent. Like we said, it's good for the championship. On board here with Jack Tynan. He can see the battle up ahead of him there between Matt Rangerly and Keelan Irwin. Keeping a close eye on things. And both Irwin and Tynan have had the small, that was a bit wide there from Tynan, have made mistakes in this race that really have cost them. As we now go into the chicane, you can see there, is that Keelan Irwin part? Yes, it is, of course. Keelan Irwin has gone past Matt Rangeley, so that's Matt Rangeley directly ahead of him. Here is the race leader, Zach Corduroy. He's on for the win, and here is Keelan Irwin, just up ahead of Matt Rangeley, on for the podium. Through Hall Bends we go. Matt Rangeley, will he keep close enough for a look up the inside into the hairpin? He's thinking about it, and he does it. Brilliant stuff from him. Irwin gets back on terms again. He's got the inside line. Here comes Rangeley. Oh, did they touch there? As they go into Barn Corner, Akeelan Irwin has been nudged out of the race. Did they touch? That's the question. Corduroy, three wins out of three. Will Hodgson, brilliant for the championship in second. And Matt Rangeley will take third place. But that looked mighty close, didn't it, between him and Keelan Irwin, who misses out altogether. Jack Tynan moves up to fourth then. Tristan Finocchiaro, an excellent fit and Alex Taylor in six. Zach Corduroy, race winner in race one. Zach, um, race-wise, you're having a fantastic weekend, um, but I know that you're really sad because your mate got bust up yesterday, Will Keynes, and uh, how are you feeling? Yeah, it was a bit of an emotional day yesterday, I must say. Um, yeah, he, after breaking his leg last year, uh, Anglesey, he's had a rod in it, and after landing on it yesterday, it's busted up through his hip, and broke his hip he's had a few screws in it and well hopefully be met on the men soon so yeah get well soon to will and also i'd like to dedicate this race to him stay strong mate well that is fantastic and that's really nice of you obviously um, get well soon obviously to will from everyone at thunder sport but um back to the racing i mean that was a copybook pretty much yeah it was a good race uh few first few laps i was battling with will Managed to get a good break on him, made a move at the mountain, and yeah, just put in some good laps. And yeah. And to thank? Oh, uh, yeah, massive thanks to my mum and dad, California Superbike Race School, V2 Mail, um, Thunder Sport, Dunlop, and uh, in competition. And also, a massive thanks to Paul Cox for coming up and helping. Thank you. Another one of those coming up later on. They didn't touch then after all. We'll be back with the Super Teens after the break. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. It's the Aprilia Super Teen Challenge. Of course, they were a part of the 450 race that you witnessed before the break. And so let's see what happened with the Super Teens as we bring you highlights of their race. In terms of the championship, Reese Irwin, Keelan Irwin's brother, leads the way ahead of Cade Verwey and Jack Scott. Just to keep you up to date in terms of what their race numbers are, Cade Verwey, number 77, Reese Irwin number 66, Jack Scott number 55. So it's all the fives, all the sixes and all the sevens. We're on board with Irishman Reese Irwin, then younger brother to Keelan as they make their way into turn one. Quite a distinct difference, of course, in power compared to the 450s. Jack Scott, as you can hear, is on the two-stroke, the original Aprilia Super Team 125 machine. Look at him there, he's flying. Back with Reese Irwin, he's on the Aprilia RRV 450. Oh, dearie me, that is not the quickest line, let me tell you, around the exit of Charlie's, and he has lost so much time there, and that could be costly in the championship. Jack Scott, who's got some good top-end speed on those 125s, but lacks in a bit of grunt, is quick. He showed it at Snetterton. He is more than capable of putting up a big fight. Reese Irwin here now trying to make up for lost time, having gone grass tracking earlier on. Oh, that was a bit close. 
as they went through the bottom of the mountain. And this has been an awful lap really for Reese Irwin. And he'll want to get this one well behind him. And then we'll have to try and close up on the gap. In truth, his chances of winning the Super Team race are all gone now. Uh, he's going to have to try and find a way to fight for the podium overall. There is uh, Lawrence Edgerly, Max Lofthouse, Rhys Irwin a lot further behind. So we've got Jack Scott up there who leads in the super teams there. Then it's number 97, Lawrence Edgerly. Then number 77, Cade Verwey. And they're switching places. Verwey goes up into second place there at the top of turn one on board again with jack scott and jack's now on the grass as well well is this rally cross or is this actual road racing that we're watching and he's now lost a load of places as well there goes max loftos and in the background there must be reese irwin so both the championship men at the front have lost ground so now Cade verwey it is that has the advantage you would argue well, unbelievable stuff here. Does anyone want to pick up any places? Max Lofthouse there, just been overtaken by Jack Scott. He's got to get back down to business. There is Cade Verwey. He leads. This would be excellent for his championship charge. Number 77, rider from uh, Silverstone. He's uh, racing out there along with his brother Luke as well. He's just up behind at the moment there, Lee Harnett. Lee Harnett, who is a, a complete newcomer to racing from Dublin out there on a 450 and uh, you can see there they're uh, learning some decent lines off the 450 rider further back is 88 and 76 we mentioned 76 a minute ago that's luke Verwey. 88 is harry lay from haven on the kjd racing aprilia so they've got another new prospect there very crosses the line leading lawrence edgerly second but for not much longer Around the outside into Coppice turn there. Looks like it's going to be Jack Scott. You're going to see a bike in a moment. There it is. Brilliant stuff from Jack Scott as he makes his way down the back straight. And now he's in hot pursuit of Cade Verwey once again. So having been on the grass, brilliant stuff from Jack Scott as he managed to get himself back into contention. Number 77 there then. Cade Verwey, well, not much longer. His lead coming down all the time. And as they go through the hairpin, Jack Scott closes and closes. And eventually, he will be able to pick the number 77 off. Further back there, no improvements at the moment for Rhys Irwin. He's not been able to follow Jack Scott. And here you can see Lawrence Edgerly and Max Lofthouse, who will battle it out for the remaining podium spot. Then, but further behind them, is Rhys Irwin. Here's the moment where Jack Scott goes past Cade Verwey. And to be honest, the amount of time that he's just made up, unless he makes another mistake again, it doesn't look like that's gonna change. Max Lofthouse there, just going up into third place. And here is Cade Verwey then. Well, it's good for the championship, of course. Both Jack Scott and Cade Verwey had points to make up on Reese Irwin. Reese Irwin looks like he's set for fifth place, although this race wasn't quite over. Up the inside there for Cade Verwey. And still following in the footsteps of Lee Harnett. Jack Scott just tucked up behind through these tight twisty sections. And up the inside there for Cade Verwey, not quite. Up towards Barn Corner we go, further back there. You can see Max Lofthouse, number 24. He's currently in third place overall. Now then, in the slipstream, number 55. Just losing out, you can see there, uh, on speed. They've got a 450 amongst them as well. Sam Cox is struggling in the 450s and is mixing it with these guys. He must have problems. So we're on board now with Jack Scott. He's got the lead. Now watch the grunt here from that 450R. As he pulls up alongside, they are going to be side by side. No, not quite. As Jack Scott flies around the gooseneck and holds on to his lead. Will Jack Scott now be able to find his way past number 16, Lee Harnett? Yes, he will. Up the inside into the new chicane for Jack Scott. And what a ride from the rider on the two. He has a good look over his shoulder there to see where Cade Verwey is. He knew that that was tight going into the chicane and he knew that he would have taken some sort of advantage. This now, more difficult for Cade Verwey, and that is your chances of a race win gone. 
as he sits up behind Lee Hanna. Don't forget, of course, Lee Hanna is inside his own race. So he's in the 450 race, so there will be no blue flags of any sort. They are still racing for position on circuit. Jack's got good look over, over his shoulder again there. And unfortunately, Cade Verwey isn't going to be able to take the race win. This is Rhys Irwin, fifth place for him. Yellow flags as they make their way uh, around here. And then uh, the last lap flag goes out. The rider that went down there, we just saw yellow flags at the hairpin. I believe that may have been Max Lofthouse who went out. And that, of course, allowing Lawrence Edgeley here at number 97 into third. And Rhys Irwin just up behind him, we just saw there into fourth place. Number 55 then, the rider on the production 125, two-stroke Aprilia. Not a lot in it between the 125 and the 450R. The 450R has definitely got the more grunt, probably just edges the top speed. But in truth, there's just not quite enough in it for us to really know what would be the better bike. But there is one thing for sure, Jack Scott is riding the wheels off his 125, he's again having a look over his shoulder, but it's going to be 25 points for Jack, and he gets himself back into the championship overall with Cade Verwe finishing in second, Lawrence Edgeley in third. That's 12 points in one race that he's made up on the series leader, Reese Irwin. Again, having a look over his shoulder, he's getting a bit worried, but he shouldn't have to worry at all. As we see Cade Verwey there tapping the back of his seat unit. It's a bit late for that. The chequered flag is out. Jack Scott takes the 25 points in race one in the Aprilia Super Team. And he wins it from Cade Verwey and Lawrence Edgeley. The series leader there, Reese Irwin, in fourth place. It was fifth for Jake Clark and sixth in the end for number 18, Jody Fieldhouse. Top three in your picture, Jack Scott the winner from Cade Verwey and Lawrence Edgeley. Lawrence, third place. Yeah. Must be pleased with that here at Cadwell Park. Yeah, yeah it was a difficult race. <laughs> uh, I was a bit tired on that one, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. Excellent. Have you got some people to thank? Yeah, I'd like to thank whole of Team Edge, Kev, Casey, my dad, Dave, Ali, um, and Johnny for everything they do. Thank you. Excellent. Top job. Cade Verwey, second place. Not so well that time. Well, I mean, second place is fantastic, but uh, you have been higher, obviously. Yeah, taking second place is a lot of points. It's still getting me up there because I uh, had a couple of issues last round at Snetterton, at which I uh, lost quite a lot of points there, but I've brought the points back up and it's good. Excellent. And people to thank? Uh, I want to thank my mum, dad, friends and family come to help. Um, Sarah, Nick, Alex, Woods, uh, Speedy Recovery, Ellie, uh, all for helping with the pit board and stuff. It's good, yeah. Uh, Dunlop, Aprilia in competition, Thunspot and all that, yeah. Excellent, thank you, Cade, well done. Jack Scott, fantastic. Well, to say you're flying the flag for the two strokes is an understatement. Well done. Yeah, thank you, yeah, it was a good race. I got stuck behind um, Cade for a bit, but then I got past him. It was a good race, with, yeah. Yeah, and then you whacked in the laps, uh, great lap times and everything else. Who do you want to thank? I'd like to thank uh, Tool Centre, um, Nick and Sophie for helping me so much, um, Liberty Bishop, uh, Comedian Decorating, Amber Leisure, Revo Sunglasses, uh, EBC Breaks, and everyone else who support me. We're at Dunlop Motorsports Technical Centre in uh, the United Kingdom, and this is the place where we design, develop, and manufacture some of the tyres that are used by winning riders and winning drivers all around the world. All the Moto2 tyres are made here in Birmingham, they're designed here, all the development work happens here and they're manufactured under the roof of our technical centre. So the design process for the tyres uh, actually starts with modelling the tyre. I mean, we use processes such as FEA, finite element analysis, which enables us to model the tyre on the screen, um, but also to model the forces that are going through the tyre before we actually build a tyre and put it into real testing. The first stage of making a Moto2 tyre is the mixing of the compound. We tend to mix compounds in batches of say 100 grams, so you'll have a recipe for each compound. Now a compound is a 
mixture of all the, the raw ingredients, natural rubber, synthetic rubber, silica, which improves the wet performance, and some of the other uh, magic formula compounds that we add, add into there. So the way the mixer works, it's a bit like a giant food mixer. The compound goes into the machine, it's mixed in the machine, and what we see coming out of the machine is like a sticky, licorice kind of material, um, which is then um, stored in strips, and again, allowed to cool for a specific um, period of time before it then goes on into the next stage, which is to have it cut into a shape that's useful for tyre building. People think that a tyre is just, just made of rubber, but there's also other materials that go into a tyre, such as fabric. And what we see here is material going through a process that we call calendaring, which is where we mix uh, materials such as fabric um, with rubber, so it sticks to the other rubber components in the tyre, and here we're having it cut into precise shapes that will then build the components in the tyre at the next stage of building. Well, the second stage of making a Moto2 tyre is building the, the carcass of the tyre. The process is a very labour-intensive process. We can see that the operator is being guided by the lasers above him um, to get the components in exactly the right place. When we get feedback from our testing and our development, we can change the dimensions, the thickness of the materials, lots of different permutations in order to give the rider the confidence that, that, that he needs in order to, to perform on the track. Third stage in building a, a Moto2 tyre is to bring together um, the carcass of the tyre to meet the compounds that have come from the, the mixing machine. The carcass of the tyre is put onto the second stage building machines and the compounds are applied as a strip onto the onto the tyre. We see the operator being guided by, by laser guides. He's applying the, the compound into the specific areas of the tyre. The compound can go on in, in very thin strips so you can have a specific type of compound on a very specific part of the tyre in order to give the grip. We can even make asymmetric compounds here and with a multitude of different uh, tread compounds across the whole, the whole width of the tyre. When we get to the final stage, which is called moulding or curing, um, we've also got the option of how long do we leave the tyre in the oven for. Uh, we can cook it at any temperature for any length of time. So this is a stage where it not only cures all the, all the uh, materials that are inside the tyre, but it also moulds it. So the tyre that comes out of the mould is the finished product. Um, it's got the sidewall stamping on it with the Dunlop logo and the size on there. And if it's a wet tyre, it's also the place where the grooves and the distinctive grooved wet weather pattern is put into the tyre. This uh, factory, we make 250,000 racing tyres a year, and they're supplied not only to, to, to MotoGP, but also to other uh, major bike events. And they're the areas where we develop tyres because we're in open competition with, uh, with, with the other tyre companies and that's where we can develop some of the new constructions and compounds that give us some really useful learnings for a one brand championship like Moto2 and Moto3 in the future. Welcome back to Cadwall Park. It's the Aprilia RRV 450's Race 2 coming up and with Will Keynes injured and Sam Cox struggling it seems this weekend, there is an opportunity here for a change of championship lead heading into Alton Park. Zach Corduroy there, well he's the man to stop, three wins out of three so far this weekend. Will Hodgson quietly going about his business and could end up championship leader over this man, Sam Cox, number 54, who will want to get himself back into contention here, but not sure if he's going to quite have the pace. He'll be looking forward to getting this round done and dusted. Always keep an eye out for number 93, Matt Rangeley there, who struggled with his front end all the way from the line. Keelan Irwin, Jack Tynan, Keelan Irwin is number 69, and Jack Tynan are on board with number 196. That's Matt Rangeley has just got underneath him into Charlie's. They're all jostling for position in the early stages of this one onto the back straight. And now into the slipstream of Matt Rangeley, Jack Tynan, the former Thundersport 500 rider. And there is Zach Corduroy. Zach Corduroy, who didn't get off to the greatest of starts, is now well back in the frame again. And going around the outside of riders and all sorts there into Park Corner. He has been the man to beat. Here we go then on the power, trying to find as much pace as possible through the gooseneck. Hodgson leads from Keelan Owen, Corduroy. They're all flying through there. That is uh, Alex Taylor up ahead of Jack Tynan that we can see. Now going through the chicane, very close. But uh, they all make it through safe and sound. Sam Cox at the moment, 
too much to worry about for him. He's up there. Good move, this from Tynan up the inside into the mountain. He's made that one stick. Clicks right over the top of the hill. Hodgson still leads from Keelan Irwin and Zach Corduroy. Then a small gap back to 54 Cox, Rangely. We saw there also Cameron Tenzing Jenkins. He's having a good run out. JDF rider there is Connor Wheeler. Two riders there just going straight on. Alex Taylor, that looked like who just saw a moment to go, who has gone straight on. Here is Keelan Irwin then. And up into the slipstream goes Zach Corduroy. He's ready to pounce. And once he does, he can zone in on the leader of this race, Will Hodgson. On board again here with Jack Tynan. Around Charlie's he goes. Tynan getting closer and closer to the front of this championship. Got uh, Tristan Finocchiaro just up ahead of him. Or is that Matt Rangerly? That's Matt Rangerly, sorry, up the inside of him. Then Sam Cox just uh, next up, there they go. There's Tristan Finocchiaro, followed by number six, Casey Wyatt. And there is Connor Wheeler again, the JDF rider. They head around Chris Curve and now into the gooseneck. Hodgson so far remains unchallenged out front. Corduroy has dealt with Keelan Irwin. Sam Cox at the moment in a solid fourth place. But these guys behind have been catching. Go into the chicane. Something just not quite clicking for Sam Cox here this weekend. Not sure why he is a rider that deserves his championship for, to get himself into the championship lead. Every now and again has a few slip-ups, but he's a very fast rider. And so it's strange to see him not fighting it out for the race wins here. And he's coming under increasing pressure now from Jack Tynan, number 196, who is ready to make his move. Maybe he'll try for the slipstream on the start finish straight here and have a look up the inside into turn one. Across the line, the two leaders, Will Hodgson and Zach Corduroy. Third for Keenan Irwin. There goes Jack Tynan. Looks like he might just have a look now at Sam Cox as they head onto the back straight. This is Will Hodgson and he's got company. There he is. Zach Corduroy has fought his way to the front again. Now, will Will Hodgson know about this championship situation? Zach Corduroy is on for 100 out of 100. But Will Hodgson, if he sits in second place there at the moment, will be the championship leader as we leave here and head to Alton Park. So one rather fancy is that he'll have a go for the next half a lap or a lap, see if he can catch that corduroy, and if he can't, Will Hodgson might just settle, you know, for second overall here. It's those points that make the prizes, and he, of all people, knows that in this championship. He's lost out on so many occasions to these consistent riders, and now maybe it's his turn. It's that corduroy, however, with another win, will inevitably throw himself back into the championship mix. As said at the start of the show, he's 97 points behind the championship leader coming into this round, but he has taken maximum points. There you see the two JDF riders, uh, Cameron Tenzing Jenkins and Connor Wheeler. Onto the start finish straight though, the leaders. Will Hodgson at the moment, just staying in touch with him. Here comes Jack Tynan, he goes past Sam Cox. So Jack Tynan is now up into fifth place. Here we are then, back with the leaders, and Zach Corduroy not having things all his own way. Will Hodgson are on board with here, Corduroy on the left. Will Hodgson will try and squeeze him out on the brakes into Park Corner. Can he get the bike stopped? That's the question. Nicely done there from Will Hodgson, and Zach Corduroy has to back out there uh, in fear of them both touching and wiping each other out. Jack Tynan has just lost two places going into Park Corner with uh, Sam Cox just going underneath him as well. But back to the front we go. Will Hodgson leads again. Zach Corduroy in second place. Long gap back to third place overall. But this is good riding from Will. He's not going to give it up just yet. What will Zach Corduroy do? Into the chicane. No room there. Of course, we saw him make that brilliant move, didn't we, in that last race around the outside of Will into the bottom of the mountain. Will won't let that happen again, I very much doubt. Through Hall Bends, just keeping an eye on things at the moment. Zach Corduroy, 
He's already had a turn at leading. Further back there, we see six Casey Wyatt, number nine, Alex Taylor, and number 58, Tristan Finocchiaro. These guys all inside the top 10. And it is about these two men at the front. Sam Cox is falling down through the field then. He's down in six. So he'll take 10 points if the chequered flag were to go out now. Here is Jack Tynan, and there is Sam Cox. Well, he's gone up to fifth, and now he's back down to sixth again with that overtaking move. Will Hodgson, it is the lead, but not for long. Up the inside, they are chopping and changing through Park Corner here. Corduroy and Hodgson, and this time, Corduroy will try and do a job on Will. This is the moment where we will find out what Corduroy has, because, oh, moment there for Alex Taylor. He's already had one this race and another. Corduroy could just stretch out a gap here and be uncatchable. He's done that in so many races, and look at that. This time, I think it is all over for Will Hodgson. We're on board of him here, and that gap is just too large. He's not going to be able to catch him. He's not got anything left for Zach, and I think having had one go at it, that's enough. It's about the championship now, and you could not blame Will Hodgson for settling for second place. You said, oh, Will, blimey. That was Pat Rangely going for a, a little bit of a grass cutting expedition there on the exit of the chicane. So easy to do here at Cadwell. There's Keelan Irwin. At the moment, the number 69 is in third place. But just like the last time, Matt Rangely is closing in on him. Very similar picture here to what we saw in race one with Corduroy winning, Hodgson second, Rangely third. And Keelan Irwin, of course, was in fourth before dumping it at that last hairpin. And there you see Matt Rangely going through on him. So Keelan Irwin has got to do it all over again. Here's that corduroy coming into the closing stages of this race. What a weekend this will be in the championship for Zach Corduroy if he holds on to another win. Four on the trot before we head into Alton Park. And of course, it's worth remembering that it's a one-day format at Alton Park and there are double points up for grabs over the two races when we get up into Cheshire. Two big, big races in context of the championship. But here this weekend, he's done everything that has been asked of him, Zach Corduroy. Further back, this is Jack Tynan, who slowly but surely is finding his way to the top three in these races. But at the moment, He's just behind, sorry, he's just ahead of Sam Cox, so he's up into fifth place. That's uh, one of the super teams that he's just going past there. So it looks like he's going to catch those guys just up ahead of him. Zach Corderoy will be making his way onto the start, finish straight in a moment. And there will not be long to go for him. Here he comes, last lap flag out then. Zach Corderoy well on his way to taking race win number four. He's lapping in the 137s. That's still about a second slower than George Stanley's lap record. And the super teens, of course, will be coming up after the break, after this race. So we'll see how they got on in a moment. Zach Corduroy. Let's just see. In the championship, Zach was down in eighth. And as I said, 97 points behind. We'll see the championship standings in a moment and we'll see how far up the leaderboard he can get himself from eight. Will Hodgson, by our maths, should take the championship lead here with a second place finish. Who will get third between Matt Rangely and Keelan Irwin? Corduroy has a big look over his shoulder and he can see that he's got a nice advantage so he can just cruise now over the top of the mountain. Bit of showboating maybe. Or will he just sensibly ride this home? through Hall Benz. Tail Ender just coming up on him in a moment. But I don't think it'll get in his way or affect him. No, here's the battle for third. Keelan Irwin nowhere near close enough. So unfortunately, Keelan will have to take fourth on this occasion. He'll miss out on the podium. Rangely will be up there again. Hard luck for him. The checkered flag goes out. And it is four out of four for the unstoppable Zach Corduroy. You cannot ask for better than that here at round four of the championship when he missed a round earlier in the season. Will Hodgson 
takes a second place finish. The consistent championship leader now. Matt Rangely third, Keelan Owen in fourth. And there you see the top three, Corduroy, Hodgson and Rangely. So in the point standings overall, Hodgson leads it by 33 points. I'm shocked by that. Zach Corduroy has lifted himself up into third and is now just 45 points down. More than halved the gap at the top. Brilliant racing, one more to come after the break. Welcome back to Cadwell Park. Now it's time to take a look back to see what happened in race two for the Aprilia Super Team Challenge brought to you by Dunlop. Jack Scott here was on for four wins out of four, which should lift him into championship contention once more. Cade Verwey was looking to try and leave here as the series leader overall, ahead of Rhys Irwin, who hasn't had things his own way so far this weekend. Away from the line, could start there from Rhys Irwin. We were on board with him earlier on, and he struggled. Now on board with Jack Scott, who on the line there just not quite got that grunt and the pace of the 450R leading into the first few corners. But look at that, back up underneath Cade Verwey and Lawrence Edgeley there going through as well. Past Rhys Irwin, who got off to a brilliant start. Rhys Irwin desperately trying to get himself back onto the podium here on TV day, just as he did at Snetterton uh, last month. And on the opening few laps, it was Jack Scott that managed to take advantage. Max Lockhouse there, you just saw a rider that fell earlier on. 18, Jody Fieldhouse. Well, Ford here with Bree Irwin. Now you can see Lawrence Edgeley has uh, just gone through. Lawrence on the podium in race one. He's running wide on the exit. But Bree Irwin. Oh, and there's another one. Cade Verwey from fourth up into second place. So his championship rival goes through on him. The chequered flag were to go out now, then there would be probably around about 13, 14, 15 points between them. That's the three of them going into Alton Park. Jack Scott, well, in race one, you saw Jack Scott, of course, dicing it out with Cade Verwey. He made a mistake, went on the grass, and then had a lot of work to do. This time, there he goes, zipping past on his Abrilia 125 and there is no stopping him. Lapping in the 146s, it's still a little way off that lap record that to this day is still being held by Jake Dixon. And that is way back in 2009, I believe, or maybe even 10. But a great ride from Jack Scott here ahead of Cade Verwey and Lawrence Edgeley. Reese Irwin, who came here as the championship leader by 22 points, looks like he's going to have to Loosen the grip on that and allow someone else to turn. He will try and, of course, bounce back at Alton Park. Much like the 450s, the super teams will arrive there with double points on offer. Lawrence Edgerly then in third. You're looking there at Cade Verwey. Cade, who looks set for another podium. No stopping this man, though. I say man, I should say boy, of course. Jack Scott, just 15. Aprilia Super Teams for riders aged 12 to 18. There's Max Lofthouse, number 24, the rider from Burnley. Another rider out there on the Aprilia 125 production machine. Brilliant bikes, these Aprilia Super Teams, the 125s. They've, of course, been in action now for so long. The introduction of the 450R there that you can see Verwey, Edgeley, and uh, Rhys Irwin on are brilliant. And May, may just have the edge in terms of grunt and top speed. There's not really an awful lot in it. Jack Scott is really, really riding very well. And his corner speed, not just here, but also back at Snetterton was evident as he tries to give himself a chance at winning this championship. It could, in theory, go all the way down to the final round when we return here at Cadwell Park. So both... Cade Verby and Reese Irwin really need to get themselves a bit of a lead leading into that final round because Jack Scott is on for four wins out of four. 
Very will be pleased, of course. He's up ahead of Reese Irwin. Can't quite catch Jack Scott for now, but this will be the championship lead. He won't have much of an advantage over Irwin or Jack Scott, but we'll get a glimpse of those championship standings in a moment. From here, as we mentioned before, it will be Alton Park race day, Saturday the 2nd of July. Last lap flag there being held out by Mark. And Jack Scott here is actually closing in again on 450 rider Lee Harnett. Around Coppers, he goes much more spread out this race than the one we saw earlier on between the top two and three. Not quite as many errors this time. Jack Scott with over a 10 second lead at this point with just under half a lap to go. Cade Verwey comfortable in second. You can just see there he's got about two seconds over Lawrence Edgeley in third. Reese Irwin, well, not his weekend. He's 10 seconds adrift of Lawrence Edgeley, but he is ahead, crucially, of Max Lofthouse and Jake Clark. Around Mansfield for Cade Verwey. And now Jack Scott just got to roll this one home. You can hear there, not quite on full power. Keen not to let that Aprilia go pop in the final stages. But uh, he's had a very, very good ride indeed. And coasts the 125 back home. He's going to take this victory in brilliant fashion. And it is four wins out of four for Jack Scott, who is back in the championship hunt in the Dunlop Aprilia Super Team. Jack Scott wins here at Cadwell Park takes 25 points and finishing ahead of Cade Verwey who also needed that result for the series standings. Lawrence Edgeley was third with Reese Irwin in fourth place. Max Lofthouse fifth and Jake Clark sixth. You see shot of the guys on the podium then Jack Scott very happy in the middle. The race winner and now let's take a look at those championship standings. It's Cade Verwey that leads but by just three points. Ahead of Jack Scott, Reese Irwin has dropped down to third, but he himself is only 16 behind Verwin. Well, you can't get better than four out of four, can you? No, I can't get better than that. That was a brilliant weekend for me. Best I've ever done, really, yeah. I thought it was, I loved watching you negotiate the traffic through Hall Bends, that was brilliant. Yeah, I was just trying to pick my way through them. I just, just didn't want them to catch me up, really. Another day and another round over here at Cadwell Park. Thanks for joining us for round four. We'll see you at Alton Park in Cheshire in July.